Uh, Today I'm going to talk about the Bayou City Digital Asset Management System for those in the uh, South Central States Fedora Users Group, the SCSI FUG. Um, you've been with us on this journey for some time now. Um, for others, maybe you've heard about it in other venues, but I'm really excited that our um, digital collections is now uh, available to the public. We haven't done a, you know, a launch with a lot of fanfare quite yet, but I'm excited that y'all will be able to see it. So uh, I'm just going to go over a, a little bit of background. Um, then I'll talk through the tooling, do a demo, and save some time for questions. All right. Now you can't see the notes that I have up, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. Um, so the digital library was launched in about 2009 and has been in the content DM software, you know, up until now. We actually have a locally hosted, unsupported content DM instance right now um, because of our you know, commitment to, to migrate. Um, they improved, uh, the development team improved the UI. Um, Oh gosh, now it's seven years ago. And then recently they uh, made a few more modifications to uh, unify the theme um, across all of the library sites and then to add on um, a couple of the other repositories that we have now, the AV repository and our um, scholarly communications. And uh, for those who may be familiar with ContentDM, we just kind of ran up against some of the limitations that it had uh, as far as navigation, sharing, download options, uh, image viewing, access control, uh, metadata control and validation, to, just to name a few. Now, since then, there have been some changes to content DN that allow that, but we still uh, like the flexibility that you know, our local system offers us and an open, uh, open source system. Uh, so starting around 2014, 2015 is when a group in the libraries started to investigate some new uh, software, uh, evaluate what we'd like to, to move towards. And uh, what they ended up uh, deciding upon was actually Fedora with what was then Hydra in a box. Um, so Hydra, the former name of what is now Samvera, the open source software community. Um, and Hydra in a Box uh, was slash is, well, Hydra in a Box turned into kind of Hyrax and so, sort of the scope of work uh, changed in some ways, um, but ultimately Hyrax is a digital repository um, and we've done a number of customizations, which I'll, which I'll show you. Um, but uh, we've been working with a team across departments. So I'm the metadata coordinator. We work with the special collections um, digital uh, uh, projects coordinator, I think is her title, a developer in our systems, a metadata specialist, and our digitization specialist. So that's the um, development team that works on this, and that's been really effective. And also is a reason that I may not be able to answer super technical questions, um, but those can be forwarded on. I'm not sure if Sean is on the call um, or not. Uh, and one of our other uh, major goals was to incorporate digital preservation and improve our, our workflows and tools. So again, those who may have seen this have, have seen various iterations of this chart, and I just feel like I'm among my people having seen many of these charts today. Um, these diagrams. So uh, briefly, the uh, uh, software in the red boxes are things that we've developed, and then we also make use of Archivematica, Archivespace, um, Avalon, and then Armand is our code name for our Hyrax uh, access system. Uh, and this is where we're getting that Bayou City. So Greens, Cedar, Armand, those are all um, bayous in Houston, which is called the Bayou City. Uh, so I won't go it through this in depth. Uh, feel free to check out the slides and take a deep dive if you'd like. I've linked um, various pieces that have a public user interface, but everything is available um, on our GitHub. 
So we have uh, our workflow software where the digital item, um, digital image files and the metadata come together. That uh, interface is informed by our metadata application profile, uh, different machine readable specifications. Integrated with that is um, an ARC minter. So uh, that, that mints IDs for our digital objects, uh, both upon an export to a preservation package and also for the access objects. We have a controlled vocabulary system and that uh, kind of gets piped into our metadata editor. So, so we're entering uh, controlled terms and then things go off to the, the various systems that um, kind of do their job best. So Archivematica is our uh, preservation, digital preservation solution. Archivespace manages the finding aids. And then we have uh, Avalon that uh, also a Samvera solution bundle as our access system for audiovisual resources. And then um, this should probably say Hyrax, but uh, kind of our Hyrax based Armand um, access system for still images and text and things like that. Uh, and then we have some services here that are, are similar to um, what Tori talked about where there's a publication mechanism that then uh, integrates. And I'll show you an example of kind of what that looks like in just a bit. Oh, I keep blocking the um, bottom here. All right. This is how we've uh, kind of demonstrated our work to our library colleagues um, at U of H because we've been working on this project for a very long time and they're kind of just seeing this um, digital library, but we've been working on that infrastructure for so long. So um, those are those different tools that I just talked about. We've been working on those since about 2016 um, and they're largely kind of self, you know, they just sort of work now. We're refining some of our workflow tools around, you know, the uh, Mason, which is where we create our metadata and manage images. But other than that, um, the other ones are, you know, very stable. Um, so that was the focus until about, uh, what was last year? 2019. 2019 is when we um, really kind of hit the ground running on just developing our front end system. Um, so this is kind of how we just communicate all of the work that we've been doing that we've been doing to, to build up to the um, to the use of our systems. So what have we done? Um, we've improved the discoverability. We've improved our end to end workflow. We've created our metadata in such a way that it can be reused and, and is reused between systems. Um, We've implemented some access restrictions, download uh, availability and restrictions, improved ADA and responsive design, um, and we're in a place to have more flexibility for future features. And this lists out specifically the changes, the customizations and changes we've made to Hyrax, which is in um, similar to Islandora, which was talked about yesterday, is the kind of solution bundle uh, that sits, it's a stack uh, that sits on Fedora. So we are not touching Fedora in a day-to-day -day development world, um, but it is, you know, based on that re repository. So we've made some changes to the viewers, um, some download restriction uh, options and access restrictions, which really will help out our um, colleagues in special collections to deliver items to patrons um, and make more things available online uh, so that they don't have to kind of navigate on our file system and just find them. Uh, we've modified the, the different views. We have a batch ingest mechanism that we've developed and that works similarly. I can't recall who we're, whose presentation it was, but where um, that batch ingest is staged uh, on a server and then there's a, an import mechanism. Uh, and that one, that's really useful and handy and uh, our metadata specialists can, can do that easily. So I'm, I'm glad that um, we've, we've made it in such a way that it's accessible to 
or different team members. Uh, so I will do a little quick demo. I'll keep it quick. Um, but this is the URL. And um, uh, you can search for things or you can, uh, I'm just going to take us to one specific image because it sort of demonstrates a lot of the, the different features. Let me find this again here. All right, so one thing that we've done is we've modified, uh, I believe we've modified Universal Viewer a bit to, to take away um, sort of the, the metadata view, kind of simplify this a bit. We played around a little bit um, with a different image viewer, but we just ran up against some limitations with the, the Hyrax stack. So um, if folks are still kind of scoping out options for a digital library, um, we'd be happy to kind of share, share what we've found. So a beautiful little IIIF viewer, um, you know, we wish we could be at barbershop, but that's not reality. We have the IIIF uh, manifest here. And then this is um, what we had been working really hard on is uh, this download options. So this one, uh, this particular image, it, we had some limitations by, by the donor, so we only make a smaller uh, file available. So when you download this, this one is uh, 400 pixels. We also link out to writestatements.org, um, kind of for our MVP minimum viable product. We aren't doing anything like displaying the full text. Um, but at the very least, we kind of link out to that. Uh, here's our metadata, which is now um, beautifully cleaned up. So everything is uh, able to be faceted. Well, not everything. Down here, we've got, you know, all the sneaky other metadata, as <laughs> James said, is relegated to the other metadata section. Um, this archival location is pulled dynamically from archive space, uh, which was great because um, when things were reprocessed, we were updating them in content DM, but you know, things would be reprocessed without them telling us. So, uh, which is fine. Um, so now it's just pulls it from archive space and we don't have to worry about it. Lovely. Uh, we also have um, a feedback form, things like that, but this is where the integration comes in. So um, when an item is published in this system, kind of in the, in the back end, when it's uh, made public or any version of uh, not private. So it could be public, it could be um, campus access only or IP restricted, but you can view the item in the finding aid here. So um, if folks are familiar at all with archive space, this is uh, one of the, the item level of a particular finding aid, and it posts that item here. In the future, it'd be great. Um, we'd love to see, use IIIF to pop that image in here, but one thing at a time. Uh, and we can post those at different levels. So if there was something that we only had at um, a folder level, then you, that this one doesn't have an example of that, but you would see them at this level as well, so that um, curators don't need to describe to that item level. And then this is the the digital object arc here. So so this is our permalink, uh, and then I will actually I can't go in the background, but on the back end of in archive space, each um, item, well, now I'm getting into trouble here, but each item basically has two digital objects in archive space, um, one of which is, or maybe it's one digital object and two file versions, and one is the digital object arc and one is the um, preservation arc. So details on that if you're interested, but otherwise um, there's an integration. I'll show you one that doesn't have download restrictions here. So for this example, this is a postcard. This has uh, 
a few different size options as well as the original. Um, and these will be the, the um, smaller size options will be JPEGs that are like dynamically generated, but the original um, will be the TIFF. Let's see, I'm not gonna go kind of in the background, um, but I will show you a PDF. Uh, let's go find our friend Fritz Leiber. We have a cool um, kind of sci-fi author, his collection. Um, and so we aren't able to do the highlighting of the OCR when you get to an item, but we've standardized the viewer across browsers to um, use this kind of find option. So um, the text items have been converted to PDFs and this is basically how we're doing the full text search. Um, there were some challenges with character limits in using um, OCR produced of, like in different ways and trying to kind of upload those as files alongside a TIFF version of this. Um, but for our use cases, this is this is what worked and we're really just interested to see what users need, what kind of um, questions they have. We do have stored on our file system the, um, the TIFFs. So if someone, we have a popular yearbook collection. So if someone does really need a high resolution photo, they can get in touch with us and we have a way to find it using, hey, a little arc, isn't that fun? Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about sort of where we are. Our future work is um, migrating. So right now we've migrated about 30% of our collections over. Uh, and this migration work does involve like a lot of cleaning up. Some of the images have re, uh, been rescanned. We're using this as an opportunity to, you know, improve where we can. Um, so uh, this we call the quiet launch because our URL it does work and it's open, um, but we plan to do a little bit more of an announcement when we get to the soft launch, which is at 50%. And then um, once this is integrated with our um, discovery layer, that's when we will kind of have a much larger uh, rollout. So this is uh, the URL to our digital collections. And I wanna highlight everyone that's on the team, um, the task force members who, you know, steer this in a way. Uh, and then the implementation team are the folks that I, uh, whose roles I mentioned earlier, and we've been working super hard on this. So um, I'm happy to take any questions. So, and I'm curious, uh, in the assignment of the IDs, mm -hmm. you know, we've had some controversy over, you know, what should you assign an ID to? You know, how did you decide how much of an object to assign an ID, if that makes sense? Yeah, I mean, I guess, um, so we assign them to, I'm just gonna go back to the diagram. Mm, maybe it's around here. So we assign IDs to the digital object, so, this, oh, whoops, yeah, like mm -hmm. this, guy, this guy has a, a permalink and that has an arc. And then mm -hmm. the preservation package, which is in Archivematica, has its own PM arc. And then, uh, so archive space is the only system that knows about both of them. Uh, and then the other, the only other thing that has an ID is the cedar each vocabulary term. So, uh, those are the things that we, I suppose, felt got the permanent, like, or the, you know, ARC IDs. Mm -hmm. There are various IDs in between that are not, like, you know, minted in a, in like a, well, they are minted in an intentional way, but <clears throat> not for like a public or sort of record keeping. Like there's a UUID mm -hmm. in here that communicates with archive space and, and things like that. But I don't know if that's actually answering your question, but uh, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't have a lot of conversation, mm -hmm. I suppose. I can't think of what else might have an ID. Like, are there some other things that folks have had IDs for? 
like different versions or? Well, primarily I was thinking about um, an independent ID so that when faculty um, built different kinds of things based on content from the library, that they wouldn't have to update those applications every time we change the back end. Mm -hmm. And so it's not really like the preservation IDs, but more of a, you know, an independent ID. And it's always come down to people talking about, well, you've got the repository ID, just use that. And, and then a discussion about, well, do you sign the ID to a book? Do you assign an ID to every page? Do you assign an ID oh, to a yeah. box? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you assign an ID to each letter in a box? So I think that they've got the, uh, we have archive space and they've got all that worked out, but um, we just don't have a permanent identifier outside of the repository. Yeah, now that makes, um, yeah, I can see the question I think more clearly. And there was some question about particularly like with a multi, multi-page work and how would you link to a specific page if a page didn't have an ID and things, things like that. But um, I think some of it came down to, uh, I don't know about pr practicality in, in some ways. I think that it was, it's more than like a good enough approach. Like there was some thought, thought of it, but, uh, it's possible, yeah, we'd use like another ID. I think the idea is for a digital object, say if we, you know, mix and match in Spotlight, we would use this, but there is that limitation that it doesn't, you know, go down to the page level. The the biggest- yeah, but that's okay, as long as you selected something, discussed it and had a uniform way of doing it. I think it's nice. I also love the fact that you've linked back to the finding aid from this page. Yeah, it's so think exciting. We do that. It is, it's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I see a quick question in the chat. Uh, what what viewer is used for text? Is it a um, PDF JS? Um, let me, I'm gonna send a Slack message to, I don't know if Sean is, oh, there's Sean, okay. <laughs> yes, it is. Sean Watkins is the lead developer on this, so he's the go-to. All right, great. Well, thank you, Anne. Great presentation. Yeah, thanks. Uh